Hey everybody, I haven't done a barefoot Bible in a long time, so, you know, I think it's time. And I'm gonna try to keep these short, uh, just for, you know, clickability. I have a longer, I have a longer written work that I'm, I'm kind of working up this written project, but it's, it's a long-term thing. For now, let's keep this short, and let's look at today's question. What is behemoth? In the book of Job, we find a passage, I'll put it up, just read it yourself, about this creature, behemoth. And... Uh, scholars have come up with different theories about what behemoth is. Some of the popular ones are a hippo, a rhino, an elephant, a water buffalo, a crocodile, or a dinosaur, like a sauropod, long-necked dinosaur. And, um, you know, each of these has some strengths and some weaknesses. So let's just take a look at some of the attributes of behemoth and see if we can make a best guess at what it is. So the passage says that it feeds on grass, or it feeds on the reeds as grass. So it's a, it's an herbivore. Um, so, you know, hippo, rhino, elephant, pretty much everything but crocodile would, or, and whale. Whales don't feed on grass. So it's uh, not a whale, not a crocodile, if the text is to be believed. Um, also, there are passages that, um, uh, that convey strength and they convey size, right? So pretty much everything could fit there. I mean, how, how strong does something have to be to be strong? How large does it have to be before we consider it large? But any of those animals could, you know, conceivably be thought of as being very large and very strong animals. Especially, though, uh, the dinosaur and the whale. Of course, dinosaurs, um, you know, this big sauropod dinosaurs, are the largest land animals that have ever existed, to our knowledge. The whale is the largest animal, period, bigger than dinosaurs. A blue whale is. It's the biggest living animal. I mean, you can find bigger living things, like there are, there are forests that are actually just, you know, one connected, you know, tree thing with many, with many trunks. Um, and then like fungi that, that span miles, but context is clearly talking about an animal. So, you know, with, with the strength of whale and, and the size of whale or a sauropod type dinosaur uh, would be like a really good fit, but any of the others could fit still so far. Now there's a passage that says that the tail is like a cedar and uh, there's some disagreement here, right? Some people will say that, you know, that the passage says uh, its tail is, it moves like a cedar and, and, uh, so they'll say that's just referring to the way that it moves, and others will say, well, look, it's implied that it had a big, long tail, like a cedar is a tree. You know, it's a, it's a, it's an implied thing. I, I tend to be on that side. I, I think context would indicate a, a long or large tail, which really, um, none of them except a crocodile, a sauropod dinosaur, maybe a whale. I mean, a whale has those tail fins, the, the fluke, right? So uh, that's maybe open to interpretation if that would fit or not. I think that those make more sense. Now, I mean, I've heard arguments against it. They say it moves as a cedar, but if it moves as a cedar, if you're just saying it can move back and it can move forth because, you know, a tree in the wind would move back and move forth, then, you know, literally anything with a tail would match that. Or if you say, oh, well, you know, the shape, you know, uh, you can see an animal's tail is kind of the outline, a shape like a cedar tree. That's you might as well just be picking shapes out of the clouds because you can find a tree and a tail that to you seem the same. Maybe that is the, the uh, correct interpretation, but if it is, this description is not very useful. So I think context, we're talking about all of the grand features of Behemoth. I think context means it's big. Also, you'll hear people say, now the cedars in the Middle East aren't like our cedars here. I don't know why I'm using that voice, that's dumb. Uh, but they'll say cedars in the Middle East are actually like short, shrubby things. Um, no, no, that's that's bad botany. Um, I mean, I'm sure there are some that are like that, but there's also the cedars of Lebanon that are, you know, like hundreds of feet tall and, well, like eight or ten feet in diameter. Or so, I mean, there, there, there are huge cedars over there as well. So I tend to lean on the side of the, we're talking about grand features, so this is going to be a big, you know, a longer tail. But, you know, take it how you want. Um, the, uh, the sinews are close-knit. There's more, more, uh, you know, strength thing. Also, now here's a neat one, uh, about the, the strength. It says the, the bones are like bronze, the limbs are like iron. And that's, that part about the, it's, it says the bones are like tubes of bronze, which is neat because a, a tube is hollow, right? And, um, <clears throat> bones are typically not hollow except you might know from your biology that birds have hollow bones, right? Because it, it makes them less heavy, so it makes them less dense, so that it's easier to fly, right? It's to facilitate that. 
But did you know that uh, at least some sauropods have been confirmed to have hollow bones? I, I think this may only be like in the neck and the tail bones. Um, because, you know, the neck and the tail will be so far out from the body that, you know, leverage begins to be a problem. So by having hollow bones, it makes them lighter and easier to keep up. So, you know, I'm not saying that, that tubes of bronze is literally referring to hollow bones, but it is at least worth an acknowledgement because that would be, um, th that would be a very good way to describe a creature that had a hollow tube-like bone. Just saying. Okay, now here's, uh, so far, I mean, just talking about the strength, we could, we could leave it with anyone, but now we have uh, this, this characteristic that it lies beneath the lotuses, or it's, it's shaded by the lotuses, uh, and it, it hides amongst the reeds, uh, and it's around the, the poplars by the stream. So this is not the whale. The whale can't get up into the streams. That one's out. This would be a great description for a crocodile, but we've already learned that behemoth feeds on grass. So, I mean, th this would be a great one for that, but that's, if, if we are assuming that the Bible is accurately describing a real creature, uh, then it, it could not be the whale or the hippo at this point. Um, this would fit the hippo pretty well. Hippos are, are, you know, they spend a lot of time in the water, and so they could, you know, be floating around in that stuff. Any of the other ones could be spending some time in the water, but especially, I think this is a great match for the sauropod. You know, sauropods are very big, and there's been different debates in time about whether or not they spent most of the time in the water or most of the time on the land for very various scientific reasons, right? Um, and some people will say, well, no, see, this can't be a sauropod. This can't be a dinosaur because it was it's hiding under the shade of the lotus, and that you know it's it's so tall that it would stand. You know, it would it would be above them. It would be above the poplar trees. It would be above the reeds, and um, or it, it doesn't have to be standing in the shallow. It could be standing in a little deeper water, right? And say, oh, no, no, see, if it was standing in deep water with just its head sticking up there, then the water pressure would be so much on its lungs that it couldn't breathe in, right? Like whales can dive way, way down deep, but they, they can't breathe in when it's that deep. Their lungs are compressed down really small by the water pressure. And so even if they had like a, a straw, you know, a snorkel going up, up to the surface, they couldn't breathe in and get a new breath. It's too much water pressure. Um, and you know what? Hey, those are both good arguments. But you know what? Just it, it doesn't have to be like it's standing at the very bottom with its neck straight up. And it doesn't have to be it's like standing in the shallows if its neck straight up. What if it's just standing in like water that's deep enough where like the neck and the tail can kind of just go more or less straight at at water level? I mean, we have a, a lot of we have a lot of range here. We have a long neck that could make this possible. It, it seems pretty common sense that you don't have to have just one, you know, just at the very top or at the very bottom. You could, I mean, it has legs. It can adjust where it stands in the water. It can go a little a little more shallow or a little deeper. That's that's what I think. So I, I think this would not disqualify the dinosaur. Not not for this description anyway. Um. Also, there's a passage about, uh, the, you know, the river rages, and it's not a problem. You know, the water runs at its mouth. does doesn't matter. doesn't affect it. And it's plausible for a lot of these. I mean, they're bigger creatures. I mean, I've, I've heard that, that crocodiles can just go to the bottom of the water, and they can hold their breath for, like, hours or something. So they can go down to the bottom and, and you know, kind of wait things out. I'm not a uh, crocodile biologist, so I don't know how long they hold their breath. Um... Of course, the whale, it doesn't apply to the whale because it wouldn't be in the water anyway. And we've already established it can't be a crocodile. I suppose you might describe some of these other animals this way because they're very big. But a sauropod would fit this really well. It, it would be so big it really wouldn't have to worry about raging water. Um, barring that Disney dinosaur uh, story, whatever that was. <laughs> the raging water didn't work out for him. Um... <laughs> They say it can't be trapped, it can't be captured, it can't be pierced through the nose. There's the King James, James translation says uh, its nose pierceth, pierceth snares, which gives the impression of an elephant trunk reaching through a like trap to get some bait or something. But uh, most of the modern translations are talking about piercing the, the nose, like you put a, a ring in a bull's nose because the nose is really sensitive, it has lots of nerve endings, and so you can pull and lead an animal around even if it's a big strong animal. This is you can't pierce the nose, meaning that it, it can't be like captured, subjugated, right? Um, 
and then the not being it can't be trapped. Um, one says you can't capture it by the trap capture by the eyes. I think is the the passage, uh, and that doesn't mean like you're grabbing its eyeballs. I, I sure hope not. That's weird. Uh, but uh, some say that means you you can't uh, you can't catch it when it's looking up at you, or uh, when it's when it's looking at you. You got to use stealth, or that you can't bait it with something to you know catch its eye. Um, notice though, this passage is, is saying we can't you can't trap or domesticate it. It, it doesn't say that you couldn't kill the animal, just that uh, you're not able to to uh, you know use it for some work or to keep it contained. And that's at this time period. I mean, now we have tranquilizer darts and you know steel cages and concrete walls and zoos and things um but you know um a whale would count there a sauropod would definitely count there you're not gonna trap that sucker all the others n i don't i don't think they really fit this description i mean whales have been you know captured and used to to do work and to ride around um i, I don't know it's a little fuzzy there but um those are the main descriptions the sauropod matches like everything it matches everything uh with the possible exception of there's an alternate translation uh or interpretation that the part about close-knit sinews refers to uh, genitalia like a mammalian genitalia uh and so people will say well see it can't be a dinosaur because they don't have the same they're, they're reptiles they don't have the same genitalia that mammals do but um e even if the the interpretation is correct we really don't know about the genitalia of dinosaurs, right? I mean, we, we associate them mostly with reptiles, although it's become scientifically fashionable also to, you know, to treat them as birds. Um, but, I mean, they're, they're really... We, you, you've never seen a dinosaur. You, you don't really know what it has between its legs. Um, I would tend to think that they're probably reptilian. You know, they would be like a lizard. But I, I don't know either. So, um, I don't, you know... I. I don't go with that interpretation, uh, but even if it is true, it doesn't necessarily disqualify a dinosaur because yeah, we just don't know. Now, obviously, the main thing that the dinosaur possibility has against it is, you know, we've been all we've all been told that dinosaurs were long extinct by this time, and um, you know, maybe they were, maybe they weren't. Really, that gets into a little bit of a different question. But let's let's say if they weren't extinct at this time, hypothetical. Let's say there were a few of them around, right? then based on this, I would say it's very likely, uh, most likely out of these, that it was a sauropod, right? If they were extinct by this time, I think the other animals don't really fit the description that well. So I would think that probably the most likely answer is that there's some other animal that's extinct now, whatever it was, it wasn't extinct then, and they knew about it, and it was a real animal, and we just don't have any other descriptions to help us understand what it was. But... It was some other thing. All right, there you go. I think it was a dinosaur. I do. I'm, I'm one of the weird people. I think that dinosaurs plausibly, plausibly could have existed in smaller numbers. Uh, you know, because I'm, I'm a young earth creationist. You know, I think six literal days, I think there was a, a flood and all the animals were on the ark and that that would have included, you know, dinosaurs, uh, probably little, little kid dinosaurs, right? And so they go out and for a while they live until you know whatever kills them probably people probably people people kill them we're really good at killing things but that for a long time there may have been little pockets of dinosaurs here and there and one of them was called behemoth that's gonna be it for today thank you for watching i'll do another one i'll try to do one of these uh about every week for a while kind of get back into the habit thanks again i will see you in another one bye